declaring the end from the beginning. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. May the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. A threefold cord is not quickly broken. Bear fruit to God that your fruit should remain. A heartful harmony at home to the set-apart sons and daughters of the Most High God, Yahuwah, who are rejoicing always and again rejoicing in Him with that gentle spirit, which is how we know our Heavenly Father is near. And it's as if He is walking right there next to you. In this presentation, we will draw our attention to 1 Timothy 2.15, Timothy is referring to Eve here. Nevertheless, she will be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith, love, and holiness with self-control. Now let's track back two verses earlier. In verse 13, Adam was formed first, then Eve. Verse 14, Adam was not deceived, the woman was, and after her transgression, we know that Adam names her Eve. We expounded on this in the previous presentation. And by the way, the name Eve means point of division. With that in mind, let us carefully take a look at the consequences of Eve's actions. And what does childbearing have anything to do with salvation? In the video titled Kingdom Brides to Keep Their Eyes and Skin Open, we came across this idea of anointing ourselves with an eye salve. And because Eve's actions became a point of division, their ability to see with their spiritual eyes has opened doors to double-mindedness. The word salve is very close to the word salvation. And so when we anoint our eyes with the salvation in our Hamashiach, we heal our double-mindedness and become one or ikad with the Father. We also talked about how the Father breathed the breath of life into Adam, infusing his neshama into Adam's being. And so the natural expectation when we inhale the breath of life is to exhale it out. If you think about the gift of the Ruach given to us, in order for us to maintain the gift of life here on earth, we need to breathe out just as it goes against human nature to hold your breath for an extended period of time, so it is also against our spiritual nature to hold on to Yah's neshama, just like Adam. Our spirit man has to express the Shem or the name of the Father given to him. And by design, our spirit man responds to the initiator of life by expressing or returning the gift of the Ruach, the breath of life, and directing it back to the one who gave it. Think about it. The creator of heavens and earth, the father of lights, infused all the attributes attached to his great name in our spirit man. So what does that make us? Well, that makes us his little creators, if you think about it. So Adam first expressed his creativity by naming his helpmeet that the father formed out of the ground, the beast of the field and the birds of the air, and brought them to Adam so he can name them. This is evidence of the authority and rulership of Adam over the creatures in that garden. Adam's been given the ability to express his spiritual gifts by thinking of naming them. And so Adam's ability to collect his thoughts, package his thoughts, making it into a present for the beast of the field and birds in the air. Up until today, we see the fruit of Adam's giftings. And this remains to be evidenced for us today. Though we are in a fallen world, Though the things we know are far from being pure, 
Science is still baffled when they study these creatures and understand their purposes and how they operate and function. Scientists today use a two-name system called a binomial naming system. And so they name animals using this system that describes the genus and species of the organism. King Solomon says there is nothing new under the sun. And so here's what I believe. Unbeknownst to them, the idea that brought about the systemized way of naming animals today were simply passed down to them genetically by Adam. And so they simply discovered the name Adam had already established from the beginning. Adam was the one who ordered that name and passed it down to our genetic makeup. Thousands of years later, the name still stands. It may be expressed in different languages, but all of it is founded from the beginning. Let's move on to the woman who Yahuwah declared to be a helpmeet for Adam. Timothy has clearly stated that Adam was not deceived. It is unfortunate how Adam has been portrayed as a weak link in that he gets all the blame. Because he's the man of the house, he caused the fall. Now, by careful study of the narrative, you will see that everything Adam did was on purpose. Adam breathed on purpose. Adam walked in the spirit of the Most High God, and when Eve was formed out of him, and remember, Eve is a type of soul, and I want to take this opportunity right now to remind us the difference between spirit and soul. Spirit is a part of man that's God conscious. It's our conscience. Intuition is another attribute of our spirit man. Knowing without having to learn. And the other is worship. We as created beings are designed for servitude, to worship or be in workmanship for our creator. Our soul is our thoughts, our imagination, desire, will, intellect. So if I can pick one word to summarize soul, it is the ability to think for ourselves. The magnitude and power of our thoughts is what sets us apart from the animal and bird kingdom. If the woman came from Adam, then that makes the woman as Adam's expressed spiritual and creative gift. The woman is Adam's expressed thoughts. Our soul is our spirit's expressed thoughts. Adam carries with him Yahuwah's spirit or Yahuwah's thoughts. So Adam carries the father's word, the father's collection of thoughts. Adam is a type of Messiah for his bride, the woman. 1 Corinthians eleven seven. 7, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, since he is the image and the glory of God. But woman is the glory of man. So for Adam to express his purpose, his glorification is through the woman. So Adam, in a sense, conceived the woman into being. Now, you can even see it in the word woman. It's like man with a womb. Please hear this with pure ears, untainted with unclean thoughts of the world. I'm coming from a perspective of breaking down man's capability to think or the power of thoughts. Now, if you look at the word conception, it has double meaning. The action of conceiving a child or of a child being conceived. Well, it also means the forming or devising of a plan or idea. When you're forming a plan, you're formulating an idea, that involves thinking. That involves collecting. That involves being able to put together your collected thoughts. The woman was formed out of Adam. So Adam created the woman out of his collection of his expressed neshama, expressed thoughts of the father infused in him. Thoughts matter. Thoughts becomes flesh. Adam's thoughts mattered into the woman. So Adam is responsible for the woman and his responsibility lies within his response to his God-given abilities. So he carries the spirit of love and eternity in his being. And the scripture says that we love the father because he first loved us. So how would then Adam express his thanksgiving to his maker? Look at the word thanksgiving. 
The word thanks is very close to think. Thinking is also thinking. And so when you are breathing the breath, you naturally have to give it back or exhale it out. So if you look at the word thanksgiving, thinking is also thinking and then giving. Thanksgiving. Thinking thoughts that you received from the Father, you direct back to Him. So Adam expressed his thoughts by giving his life for Eve, expressing the thoughts of love of the Father towards us. Adam's thanksgiving is for his maker. And how does he express that? By understanding he has a responsibility towards the woman who came out of his being or Adam's thoughts. This responsibility was proven when Eve fell into transgression. And what did Adam do? He took responsibility of the matter. He died for her and with her, knowing that he is her covering. Remember, the father gave Adam directly the law or the loving instructions because our spirit man is the only part of us that can connect to the spirit of the father. So the law or the loving instructions of the father is the one that's going to convert her or will convert our soul. So Paul says that a woman should not pray or express spiritual matters without the covering of her husband. So in other words, soul cannot rule over the spirit or soul cannot sit above the spirit. Soul cannot connect to the creator. It has to be through the spirit. Soul is a weaker vessel. And so the blood of Mashiach is a covering or an atonement for our souls. Adam is a type of Mashiach. Adam's covering is the mind of Mashiach. A man ought not to pray with his head covered. Adam's authority and rulership is under the covering of Mashiach. A man's head or authority should not be under the covering of any angels, any other principality or dominion. When man walks in the spirit or rulership of Mashiach, our soul is automatically covered under that headship. Our soul needs to be ruled over and guided by the law that comes under that rulership. Then what happens is the flesh is flushed out of its lust. And therefore, you cannot express lust in your flesh if you don't have lust in your flesh. We will further understand what Paul means by walking in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh by going back to Genesis 3.16. This is the word that Yahuwah has declared over Eve's actions. Genesis 3.16 says, Unto the woman, Yahuwah says, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In pain you shall bring forth children, and your desire shall be for your husband, and he shall rule over you. Your desire shall be for your husband. And notice that it does not say Adam. So the Hebrew word for husband here is Ish. Strong's H376, Ish. The word ish has multiple layers of meaning. It means servant, mankind, champion, great man. The other root meaning of this word is enosh, and that means a mortal man. And further, root etymology of that word is anash, which is weak, sick, frail, desperate, incurable, very sick, desperately wicked. So after the fall, our soul's desire, Eve's desire, or her craving, is now under two dispositions. Remember, Eve means the point of division. There has been a division into two ruling dispositions. One leads to death, and the other leads her back to servanthood, to the Most High Yahuwah, back to the original design of rulership, back to greatness. So the natural inkling of our souls on earth has become substantially weakened, that we crave rulership. We need direction. Our souls need to learn to remember 
what it was like before the fall. Eve can be easily deceived. Our soul is easily deceived. And this is why we need the converting power of the finished work of Mashiach. We need the redemptive covering blood of our Mashiach. Paul talks about this battle between the spirit and the law of sin in our members, described in Romans 7, 23. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Romans 7, 22 says, For I delight in the law of Yahuwah according to the inward man. And this battle between flesh and spirit can be very wearisome, tiring. Yahuwah has declared this over Eve back in the garden when he says, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception in pain. You shall bring forth children. The meaning behind sorrow is a vexation of spirit, anxiousness, conception of children will be painful. Bearing the fruit of the Ruach is a real battle between flesh and spirit. Conceptually, we know that giving birth is painful to the point of near death. But regardless of how painful it is for our souls to battle this war against flesh and spirit, Isaiah 53 4 says, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by Elohim, and afflicted. You see, Yahusha became sin for us, and his death and resurrection took away the sting of death and its victory. And now we have hope that doesn't disappoint. Romans chapter 5, verse 5. Because the love of Yahuwah has been poured out into our hearts by the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, who's given to us. Yahuwah poured out his love all the way out in our hearts. And this is why 1 Timothy 2.15 says, Nevertheless, she will be saved. Our souls will experience sanctification in childbearing if, we continue in faith, love, being set apart with self-control. So while we await the restoration of the kingdom of Yahuwah, heaven on earth, garden of delight, what will save us on a moment-by-moment -moment basis is to bear the fruit of the Ruach. And how do you do that? Well, it starts with a really good understanding that our spirit man has creative powers. We create thoughts and every thought that we create comes with a responsibility. And so it becomes a responsibility of ours. So think about that for a second. What you're thinking today, the thoughts that you have been collecting in the past hour, past days, past months, past years, you've created these thoughts and you find yourselves taking responsibility for these thoughts. It's like childbearing. When we bear children, we find ourselves with responsibilities in maintaining the needs of our children. So it is when we create thoughts, you will find that these thoughts take on a life of its own and you're going to find yourself having to maintain these thoughts as a part of the consequence that Eve received for her actions. She is desiring, she is needing rulership. Joshua says, Choose you this day whom you shall serve. Joshua takes after his predecessor Moshe or Moses. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you, that I have set before you life and death, blessing and cursing. Therefore, choose life that both you and your descendants may live. If you choose to subject your thoughts to the rulership of the flesh or under the authority of a malevolent being or evil forces, then you will bear the fruit of what is dubbed as the seven deadly sins. Proverbs 6, 16 to 19. These six things Yahuwah hates. In fact, the seventh is an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devices wicked plans, feet that are swift in running to evil, a false witness who speaks lies, and one who sows discord among brethren. But if you choose to subject your thoughts according to Paul's prescription found in Philippians 4.8 to have the mind of Mashiach by thinking whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, 
pure, lovely, good report, if there is any virtue or anything praiseworthy, meditate or think on these things. And then when you do that, you develop an attitude of gratitude. And it's exactly what the thanksgiving word beautifully outlines for us. We are thinking by thinking. We are thinking by thinking. (laughs) And by doing that, we are giving back to the one who gave us breath. We give back by living out our purpose. We express the neshama that's breathed into us by giving back the giftings through the bearing of the fruit of the Ruach HaKodesh. And that's how we find ourselves in the perfect will of the Father. In the next presentation, what is it like to be in the perfect will of the Father? Can we see the grace and mercy of Yahuwah in the lessons that Eve or our souls will need to learn? And could being in the perfect will of the Father have anything to do with Ecclesiastes 3.11, where it says he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that Yahuwah does from beginning to end. Because it is in the declaring of the end from the beginning that Yahuwah's counsel will stand. Until next time, be still and know. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these do. And the God of peace will be with you.